Did you know that we were extremely close to actually getting the more mature, adult-oriented Pokemon games that everyone has been begging for for years, but then at the last second these plans were all scrapped? In a nutshell, that is what today's video is all about. I recently became more aware of just how intent Game Freak likely originally was on making those more mature Pokemon games that everyone's always asking for, and how it was ultimately those same people's fault that Game Freak changed their minds, and in an instant, an entire timeline of amazing potential Pokemon games fell by the wayside. That particular bit of irony is what really made me want to talk about this, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the details. So we are about to get into a really cool discussion about Pokemon, but the truth is, it wouldn't even be possible without the support of you guys. Which is why I wanted to take like two seconds before we started to shout out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and other music streaming services. If you enjoy my content on YouTube, consider streaming my music as well, because it is an insanely easy and an insanely helpful way to support the channel so I can continue to make videos for you guys and continue to make them even better. So if you're able to, check that out when you're looking for some music to listen to, and if you're listening already, thank you from the bottom of my heart. With that said, let's go ahead and get started for real. So, when I talk about Game Freak possibly wanting to make more mature Pokemon games, but then scrapping their plans at the last second, what am I referring to exactly? Well, I am referring to none other than Pokemon Black and White. The fifth generation of Pokemon was a step in a new direction for the Pokemon series and was different to what we had seen previously, to say the least. However, as it pertains to this discussion, there is also a ton of evidence to suggest that Black and White were originally going to be the first Pokemon games in a brand new era that catered more directly to the older fans that had grown up with the franchise, meaning that future games after Black and White were likely planned to be progressively more mature and made specifically for Pokemon's adult audience rather than its younger ones. Now, I'm not saying that we were going to get M or even T rated Pokemon games or anything, because that would never happen under any circumstance, but nevertheless, Game Freak was definitely ready to cater to their older fans around the time of Generation 5, and that was all starting with Pokemon Black and White. But, like I said earlier, it was those same exact fans who were dying to be catered to that ruined those plans, and put us where we are today where many of those fans are still complaining. Meaning that many of those who may have a problem with Pokemon today really have no one to blame but themselves. Basically, Gen 5 was a turning point for Pokemon, except instead of turning in the direction it was planning to go, it made a sharp right turn right back onto the road it had always been on, which likely really shook up the future of the franchise more than any of us could have ever known. We all know that Pokemon Black and White were extremely controversial games for a multitude of reasons. They received a ton of criticism from fans for the lack of familiar Pokemon in the games, the quality of the Pokemon designs in general, as well as a number of other things. In short, people really didn't like the vibe of Pokemon Black and White, or at least they didn't at the time. And this heavy amount of criticism is likely the entire reason why we got the next games in the series that we did, which were of course Pokemon X and Y, which followed Black and White too. The contrast between these two titles is huge, and if you pay close attention to the differences between these two generations of games, it starts to paint a picture that X and Y were a direct response to the criticism that Black and White received. People didn't like the designs of Unova? Well, Kalos came back with the smallest number of new Pokemon that any generation has ever introduced, even to this day, which also stands opposite of Unova's number, which introduced the largest number of any generation. They truly went with quality over quantity after the Gen 5 backlash. 
The Unova Dex wasn't the only criticism that was responded to, though. People didn't like the lack of familiar Pokemon in the games? Well, don't you worry, because the Kalos games came back with one of the biggest regional Pokedexes that we have ever seen, bringing back tons of older and classic Pokemon. Heck, they even give you one of the Kanto starters in the game, and now that I mention it, another big thing that X and Y did was reference the Gen 1 games a ton. You had the starters that you had access to, and there were just a ton of homages to the original red and blue versions in general. Everything from Santaloon Forest having the same layout as Viridian Forest, to encountering Mewtwo in a cave in the post-game, X and Y had some major Kanto vibes to them, and this wasn't a mistake by any stretch of the imagination. Pokemon X and Y were a very conscious effort to return to a more safe form of Pokemon, following the back backlash that Black and White received when Game Freak tried to bring about some real changes. And that safe form of Pokemon didn't really stop with X and Y, either. Sure, Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield introduced their own new mechanics, like every Pokemon game does, but they also made sure to not stray too far away from that tried-and-true formula like Black and White did, and they also threw in a ton of nostalgia and fan service for good measure. So, if you're that type of person that complains about Pokemon not really pushing the envelope or trying anything new, and complains that all the games feel the same, well, that's because the last time Pokemon tried to do something radically different and even focus in on the adult audience, they were ridiculed for it. With all of this in mind, I think it's definitely safe to say that the current era of Pokemon is at least decently, if not largely, influenced by the criticism that was given to the Gen 5 games. But was it really Game Freak's plan originally to go in a more mature direction following Black and White? Well, like I said earlier in the video, there is a ton of evidence that this is absolutely the case. Firstly, it's pretty obvious that the game is like a soft reboot for the franchise. Not only does it have all those major differences we've already referred to, but it quite literally resets itself to the beginning of the series. The games are named after colors again, for instance, and it's been well documented that Unova's Dex has tons of Pokemon that are basically the Univan equivalent of various Kanto Pokemon, and the number of Pokemon that were introduced in Unova is almost almost identical to the number that were introduced in Kanto, so the games very intentionally kind of put themselves back where it all started. In fact, one of the biggest themes of the games is new beginnings, and this would all be consistent with this being a fresh new start for the franchise. It actually makes less sense the way it actually happened, where they did this whole big reboot for one pair of games and then pretty much went back to the way things were in the very next generation. Black and White's theme of a new beginning would have made way more sense if that's what it actually was, and it was truly the start of a new direction for Pokemon. In addition to the themes of these games, their place within Pokemon's timeline also lines up perfectly with this idea that Black and White were meant to start a new era of more mature Pokemon. As we know, Black and White are the fifth generation of Pokemon games to be released, and this follows Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. One of the biggest contrasts between the Unova games and everything else that came before it is not just the Pokemon and stuff we've already mentioned, but the fact that all of the games prior to Black and White took place in regions based on areas of Japan. Gens 1 through 4 were truly like one whole saga of games that had that similarity to bind them together, and it seems like it was even viewed that way by Game Freak. If you look at Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, they have all the makings of the climactic end of a saga. They easily have the highest stakes of any of the first four generations in terms of the plot, with Cyrus trying to destroy the universe, and we also see many evolutions to previous Pokemon in Gen 4 as well, almost as if Game Freak were trying to tie up all the loose ends that they could and use as many ideas that they had as possible before closing the book on this first era of games. 
This is even corroborated by Junichi Masuda himself, as he had mentioned in interviews back in the day that he wanted Diamond and Pearl to be the ultimate Pokemon games, which makes sense if they're supposed to be the end of this first saga of Pokemon. If we assume that this is the case, then it makes even more sense why Black and White happened when they did, because Game Freak had been planning to begin a new era of Pokemon, and according to the developers themselves, they intended for that era to be significantly more mature. In an interview about Pokemon Black and White that was published in Nintendo Power Magazine shortly before Black and White's release in North America, Junichi Masuda said, quote, From the very beginning of development, we tried to see the series through the eyes of older players who had graduated from the series. Does it seem too cute? Is the writing off-putting? Is it too childish? We wanted to change these things to make it more appealing to older players. We also wrote a story that we thought would be a little more interesting for an older audience. So, really and truly, Game Freak wanted to make a more mature Pokemon game that appealed to older players with Pokemon Black and White, which ultimately they did. However, based on all of the aforementioned evidence, it seems like they had much larger plans for this particular era of Pokemon, and were going to continue making games in this more mature style, which would have filled out this next saga of Pokemon in the same way that Gen's 1 through 4 had established their own saga. However, fans were not happy with all of the changes and differences that had been made, and they definitely made their voices heard. So much so that Game Freak kind of freaked out and abandoned any plans that they might have had for future Pokemon games that followed that overall tone that Black and White established, and instead decided to revert to a safer style of game in Pokemon X and Y, one that had all of those things that fans had missed from from the Unova titles. What fans didn't know at the time, though, is that in all likelihood, our harsh feedback was directly responsible for the abandonment of the type of Pokemon games that many have always wanted, and in turn was also responsible for the type of Pokemon games we actually ended up getting, which fans continue to complain about anyway. That is, if this half-fact, half-theory-based idea is to be believed at all. However, with Pokemon Legends Arceus on the way at the time of this video's creation, it seems that Game Freak might just be making another attempt at making Pokemon games again that can appeal to a more mature audience, and hopefully this time, it works out for both them and us. So, with all of that being said, I think it's pretty ironic and funny that in all likelihood, Pokemon fans who always complain really have nobody to blame but themselves for how some of the more recent games have turned out, because it's ultimately our feedback that has put us in the position we're in. What do you think about this idea, though? Do you buy that Pokemon games were going to be more mature after Black and White before plans were changed and we potentially lost out on a bunch of more adult-oriented Pokemon titles that would have came afterwards? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, I will be back with another video very soon, and until the next one, as always, thank you guys for watching, I love you all very much, and I will smell you guys later.